The power in the altar of sacrifice, part two. Everybody say after me. The power. Say after me. Say the power in the altar of sacrifice. It's important to know that the will of God for you is prosperity. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to enjoy. When you eat three times a day, God is happy. When you are driving Jeep, God is happy. When you are buying land, God is happy. When things are moving well for you, God is very happy. He wants you to enjoy. You are not created in this world to suffer, especially when you are born again. Our kingdom is not a kingdom of suffering. It's not even a kingdom of suffering and smiling. It is a kingdom of enjoying and then enjoying. Psalm 35, 27. Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which have pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So, when you are prospering, God have pleasure. In his mind, he is saying, oh yes. In the prayer, oh hey. In the book, hey. All the man is good. He will be nodding his head when things are going well in your life. When things are not going well, there is one man that is happy. His name is Satan, the devil. John 10, 10 said, he come to kill, to steal, and to do what? Destroy. They have three fold ministry. So all this way, if things are not moving well in your life, the devil is happy because he is the architect of it. Because he is the father of evil. All evil emanate from Satan, the who? Devil. It's his ministry. And this is why Jesus came. He said, I have come that you may have your life. Not just having ordinary life. Having life more abundantly. The life Jesus has come to give you is called Zoe. The life of God in the human spirit. He has given you that life and redemption. So you are a carrier of that life. Embedded in that life is prosperity. Is what? Prosperity. That is one of the contents, the packages of that life. That you are here born again and you are suffering, it is not the will of God for you. Now, change will always come in your life the day you find the purpose that you were created in this world. No man will excel in life that have not find his purpose in God. I get what I'm saying? Yes. Ignorance is a risk. Is a what? Risk. George, am I talking? Yes. In the book of Genesis, what God did after creating man was to place them. Genesis 1 28, and God placed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, be multiplied, replenish, subdue, righteous, and covers. That's the Hebrew word. To subdue is to bring into subjection whatsoever that is opposing your success. Subdue them. When I tell you I will deal with you, I will subdue means. I will, I will, I will, I will devastate, including demons. After God created man in the garden, you know, Satan the devil became a spiritual vagabond. Satan the devil is not as powerful as you think he is. Satan is homeless. The original home of Satan the devil is the top of heaven. From the day he was investigated, and pushed out of the he became a spiritual father. He wonders, it is not even his home. Praise the Lord. He is in the dust bin of God's creation called hell. Where is hell? Hell is never created for any man. Not even Satan. Hell is the beauty of God's creation. The dust bin of outwash of whatever God created. But when the devil became homeless, just like a madman will always look at those men. Where devil can find to be a home is the those men. And that is why anybody that believes in the devil, that is doing the business of the devil, will also go there. 
after the system of what it is. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. I'm sure you are learning something. Yes, sir. You don't come to activate church not getting one thing. So open your ears so that you will hear what I'm saying. And open it wide so that you will also hear what I am not saying. Amen. 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 So we are created for dominion. But the question is, why is it that some persons are not dominating? Why is it that we are begging even when our father is a king? Why is it that we are being manhandled in the hand of the devil? Instead of devil to bow for us, we are bowing for devil. Why? Why is it that poverty has become a native of Africa? Why? That is what I want to teach you tonight. It's the teaching process. Now, there is a covenant called covenant of prosperity. Called what? Covenant of what? It is only those who will get that covenant. It is all, It doesn't matter how long you have been in the church. It doesn't matter whether you are a pastor. It doesn't matter whether you are anointed or not. If you are not killed into that agreement, it is called agreement or covenant. So every provision of God, there is a condition. There is a what? Condition. What is a covenant? This is my provision, and this is what you will do to get it. I was telling you yesterday that even salvation has a condition. Some of us say, salvation is free. But God said that, no. God, salvation is no longer free because there is a condition. Because there is a what? Condition. Until you give your life. Even if Jesus had died on the cross of Calvary, there is a thing you must do to get it. It's not free. So our kingdom is a kingdom of covenant. There is no free provision anywhere. From the day of creation, our God initiated a covenant. Adam, sir, eat everything. Yes, sir, but there is one you will not eat. Any day you eat it, you die. Yes, sir, a covenant has been initiated. And the day Adam ate, Adam was under a curse. Why? Because it is a covenant keeping God. Church, am I talking? Yes. It's good you know these things. So you must locate your covenant. You must locate your covenant. Without locating your covenant, you will not make it. Now, one of the covenant we have to locate is the covenant of sacrifice. Covenant of what? Sacrifice. Nothing just happened. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Nothing just happened. Nothing. Something makes something to happen. Amen. Amen. Nothing just happened. If you didn't leave your house to come to this place, your city here now would have been vacant. For the word to be preached now, somebody sacrificed for it. Nothing just happened. Nothing just happened. A sacrifice is something of great value, which we are willing to offer to God in order to receive extraordinary thing that is highly valuable. I want to give something like some of us are giving now. So some of you that have given this sacrifice, that is, it wasn't easy. So we will be trekking home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But there is a reason why you did. Is it not true? Because there is a higher thing. God told Abraham, sacrifice your only son. Your only son. Yes. Why? Abraham wanted to be a nation. So he was ready to give only one son. So that he can be a nation. Praise the Lord. And when the Lord tested him, God swear. God took an oath. You say, ah, why we go swear? Yeah, that was the level of that time. Praise the Lord. The original thing hasn't come. When the original came, he said, do not swear. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews said, by two immutable things that will, it will be impossible for God to lie, he made an oath. By my name, I have swear. Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplication, I will do what? Multiply you. In Jesus, such oath is on your head. Amen. You are not here. I said by Jesus, but such oath is on your head. Amen. Because Jesus and God have entered the agreement on your behalf. Yes. And that agreement was seen by the blood of Jesus, but blood covenant. A blood covenant is the highest covenant. Yes. And Jesus has entered it on your behalf. Amen. Therefore, you cannot fail. Amen. Therefore, you cannot be someone and get. Amen. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Look at somebody say, Neighbor, Neighbor. this year is my year. year. I am untouchable am because am I am a covenant minded man. Yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. For you to prosper in the kingdom, way, you must locate the covenant of prosperity. You must locate the covenant of what? Not every child of God is in this covenant. But those that have located it, by right, we are supposed to be in this covenant. But it needs a work. It needs a work. Not just saying I'm born again, I'm a child of God, that you are neglecting it. There are a prayable things and there are a doable things. There are a prayable things and there are what? Doable things. When you pray, it's an altar to it's a sacrifice. Then you must also do the doable. Am I talking? Yes, sir. Luke 6, that 8 is a key. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Rolling over. Shall make a covenant. As you give. Men shall also give unto you. Which means if you don't give. Nobody will give you. If you have been in this church. Or wherever you may be worshipping. And you have been a giver. And nobody is giving you. It's not true. It can never be true. Because the covenant can never be broken. Can never be what? Every giver receives. Every giver receives. And they receive in abundance. As you give one, men shall give in return. Shaking over blessing and running over. That is what you will receive this Christmas in Jesus' name. Shaking together. Running over. And press that. Key wash. Press that. For those of you that have come to market to buy a basin of garden, you see sometimes they all are especially this ones from bush market, bush coming. Okay? I mean, when I say bush in the far away land, as they are pressed, they will keep buying. Because press anyhow you like. When it is filled, it is a field. That's what you call abundant blessings. Abundant. Your sacrificial giving. Is fundamental requirement. Your sacrificial giving is one of your kingdom, I mean, kingdom expansion. Giving to the work of God, giving for the progress of the work of the Lord, giving to humanity, helping the poor, giving out your resources, giving out what you have is one of the things that will promote your financial level in life. When you are not a giver, not just a giver, a sacrificial giver. I tell you, you will always have a time. No stingy man prospers. No stingy man prospers. Most of us are too stingy. Stingy to the level of being tight. And when you are like tight, Father, I don't pray stupid prayer. If you are a confirmed non tighter I cannot fight God. Every member of party page they are all tight, they know. Because I have trained them. You don't train, you don't begin to pray, oh, 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 pray. This, this. You begin to post it for what? Tight failing is for those that want to make it. Because making it in poverty and prosperity is a choice. God will never force you to be rich. Now that will God need you to be poor. Praise the Lord. Are you going to say? Yes, sir. Now, let me tell you. When you hear the word God in power, then God, see, your riches and your property is no longer in the hand of God. It is man determined. You don't understand. Open your Bible. Genesis 8, verse 20 to 22. There is nothing like God made poverty. Okay? You are poverty. All your riches is your the you that will determine it. Not that God made the power. No, it is you that will make yourself poor because He has given you according to His divine nature, has given us all things that pertain to love and war through the knowledge of Him. And that's it. So Jesus died that through his poverty on the cross we become rich. He was made poor. A man that was never a poor man became a poor man overnight. So that the cross that was on Adam, he took them and led them on the cross. And poverty is one of the strongest costs 
Poverty can ridicule the man. Close to a dead man is a poor man. One preacher was talking one day and he started crying. A preacher from Okoni. He said, I am the only man in the village that they use mats to bury the father. Said in my very eye, my uncle had money. They begged my uncle. Come and back, he said, for where? It was the mat in my house that we brought and wrapped the father. And today I have Jim. And today I have everything. Yet my father was. The man cried. He said, property is a party. Next to death is poverty. Property is dead member. What can next? I told the story of what happened in the uh, job area. A man that came out of the village with a wife to pay us when they come up in. And they are living in the house of a strong independent landlord. The one woman will be begged. One day, the woman went to beg the man. The man said, unless you sleep with me, that's the only condition for the man, the woman accepted. They started doing their thing. Before you know, the man started marrying. And the man said, why are that living? She said, from today, you won't marry this woman again. And that's how it was. That's from, he said, from today, a man who can do high blood to her, a man that, a woman that has children with you, poverty is the party. To fear her. You will never be poor. He said, look at me. You challenge me, you stop marrying this woman from today. Before you know, the man don't go pay. Pay and store for the baby. Bought the car and give the woman. Give the woman a stake. And the woman and the man became on a wall. Where do I get See, the woman that was dying became very fat, well packaged. Let me tell you, no woman is ugly, yo. No woman is ugly. That's your wife, you think so. If another hand hold that woman, you know that no woman is. The woman was transformed. So money can cause transformation. You don't know. Money can make a nonsense woman to become a very valuable woman. That is why you need money. And God of heaven will give you money tonight. Yeah. That your enemy is too small, man. Yeah. Is it the enemy to become a millionaire? I said, let the God of heaven grant down works that is too much. Yeah. Upon your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But God has given everything to you. Genesis 8, 20 to 22. And who have been there that act unto, unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered up unto the altar. And the Lord smelt a sweet sour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the ground anymore for man's sake. Look at that. I will not again cause the ground for man's sake. So you are the one causing your ground by your practices. I will not again cause the ground for man's sake, but the imagination of their heart is able continually from their youth. 22. Why the earth remained? Look at the condition at which what God did was this. I am not going to punish the human race again in general. Because after that fall, there was a great poverty in the land. That project, nothing was moving again. The economic system of the world was shut down. And after God received that sweet sample, he said, oh no. What I am going to do to cut the poverty is that I am going to push it to be human determined, not God determined. As long as the earth remains, see time and have it shall not see. Who did he see time and have it? Sowing and reading. Giving and receiving. That is the only platform through which man can prosper himself in the kingdom way. That's the only platform. So non-givers can never amount a great weight in our kingdom. As simple as that. And that is the God, the, 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 the message. So let me just wrap up because of time. Now, what does the altar of sacrifice offer? What does it really offer to us? Number one. Offer 
time of sacrifice, break generational causes. Break what? Generational causes. Say it after me. Say, say it after me. Say, order of sacrifice, break generational causes. When the man of God was leading prayer, he said, when an order of cost is following you, even if you go to the U.S., if you follow you and go there, you go to Chicago, that cost is on your head, it's on your forehead. One man struggle, one Calvary man struggle to go to London. He said they have reached airport. He, he, he have landed in in in, in Britain. He have landed in Great Britain. I mean, the leg is there. He just to take a bus and he boarded the bus. The man was a smoker. The thing hungry. He can't because all this wire he never smoked. He said, ah, "What will be will be." You bring the cigarette inside bus. Bam. But the said, "No, no, 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 no." Because in, in, in Nigeria, anything goes. But over there, they arrested me, put him back. That sent me as a landed for moving. He had not moved out from here to Joshua. They, they brought him back, put him in another plane. Many people that have paid for the flight coming to Nigeria to just put him back. As he looked up, he said, I'm gonna Is it that what he did was just to collect his hand and put his? So what the man came back with was ordinary sand. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah, you can't come back from a country where people are making it with the sand. And what was the color of the sand? Yeah, it's sand of, it will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah, so if you want to break generational cost, that's what you need now. Order of sacrifice is what you need. First Chronicles 4.10. Talking a man called Jabez. And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be upon me, and that thou shouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. This man called Jabez was an involvement of evil, generational cause. No body in his family would amount to anything. But this man stood up and rested an altar of prayer. And what happened? And God granted him his other desire. For you to make a change in life, you must sacrifice something. You must do what? Sacrifice something. This man sacrificed, prepared in prayer altar. And what happened? God heard him. Number two. The order of sacrifice entitles you to a sworn blessing. To a sworn blessing. Like what we said here. And Abraham did that which no man can do. What did Abraham do? Abraham was willing to bring his only son that was given to him in old age. And God swear. Abraham did not just bring the child. They are dying. When they were going, the young man said, Daddy. Are you sure you are not making a mistake? Because we have been sacrificing other days. Here is the firewood. Here is the knife. Maybe here is the kerosene. Where is the lamb? He said, God will provide. If it were some of you, that would have taught you to go back. I am sure when Abraham was tying the toy, he said, Daddy, are you so tying me? You are all fine, boy. Abraham said, Shut up. This is a serious business. Tie the two hands. Tie the two legs. The word of God said he raised the knife to smash. And angels of the Lord held the hand. Otherwise, the man to slaughter. Why? Because Yahweh said, Yahweh said, it doesn't matter the grief. Because Jesus, because Yahweh, because Eshedah has said. And this day he is saying through his word. The Bible you read, brothers and sisters, this Bible is the sayer's book. Of the new covenant. As you read them, do you do them? That is it. Do not be a hearer only, but a, a doer, so that you will get the blessings that is inside. If you are in this place, say, I am here. And God swear. Abraham, I swear by my name. There are some of you that heaven have already swear. 
It's just a matter of time. If you are ready to, to come. Yeah. Before God swear, <laughs> you must do what Abraham do. Now, other people say, never you say Abraham blesses am I? If you like, sing it for one year until you do what Abraham did. You will never get Abraham's blessing. So Abraham's blessing is not by singing. Abraham's blessing is by doing. You will be a doer in Jesus' name. Amen. Three. Offer of sacrifice a vast thing. We know, like I read yesterday, David did that which God did not like. Spirit entered in, started counting. He said, go and count. You count God's people without telling God. God kept going. And he counted. And the anger of the Lord came. And then angel of destruction was released. And thousands were slaughtered. And he was bitter in his heart. And God told him, take a sacrifice, take a seed. I can tell you, there is a wonder in your seed. Why would I say that? Are you giving pastor? You can only give. Maybe a pastor that doesn't have money. See, every pastor is a rich man. You know? Right. Unless you are not working with him. Covenant. I am a cop. See, I have never begged for money. I have never I don't like members of my church are here. I have never told anybody any day, give me the chapter. I will never say. I will never beg anybody. I am not a beggar pastor. I am a giver pastor. Praise the Lord. I am telling you, pastor, me, me, at my level. So if me can say that is. So when are they go? When the pioneer, when all those classical men in the ministry are telling you that God places, yes, it's true. I get what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? And he moved to the house of a man who is a custodian where they buy all these things. Aruna. He said, Aruna. He said, I, was, I, I told you yesterday that Aruna saw him and said, hey, because King, come into your house. What is this? What, what is it? Do you have the thing? Uh-uh. Take it, King. Take. He said, God forbid that I will offer unto my God a sacrifice. I will buy it with my mom. Bring it. Because he wants God to accept it. A sacrifice that the Lord will accept is a sacrifice from your heart. A sacrifice that you value. If you read the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 2, he said, was telling them, the sacrifice you give to me, is it this lamb coat? Eh? The one that you want to throw away, the cloth you want to give to your fellow Christian brother, is the cloth that even if they give it a madman, they will reject it. Amen. The shoe that look like that of the leprosy is the one you want to give your brother in the Lord. And you think as you give, heaven will be happy. happy. He said, No. He said, Carry this type of coat and give to your governors and see if they will accept it. So if your governor cannot accept it, how do you think Almighty God will accept it? Most of us are the ones that hinder our blessings. By the time you are coming to the house of the Lord, you are bringing money. The money you want to use for offering is the money that you are trying in all the shops and they push you. As you are going to say, let's give it to God. And as you are giving it to God, say, okay, I will give back to you. I will return because say, give and it shall give unto you. Not that God is wicked, but God is saying, because it is my Lord. As you are giving me no money, I will return it unto you. And when your life begins to tear, you will come to pass the gate. Let me tell you something. Pastor and God, who is higher? Uh-huh. So when God is dealing with you, no pastor can pray it out. Hello. Hi. If your case is being caught by witches and wizards, very simple. When we lay hand and speak in tongues, you go. But when you are the one causing your problem by offending your almighty God, then you are in trouble. You see money that nobody can spend in this world. And that day you are dancing the highest dance. You want to scatter all the sea. You will dance all the trumpet just to give God something that is unforgivable. May the Lord have mercy upon mankind in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ignorant of Fradera is laughing. Giving God what no man can take. What Kekeman have chased you since. What the short man said I will arrest him. 
is what you are using to give to your heavenly father for sustaining you through sustaining you throughout the year. It's an insult. Amen. 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 We will honor you with our Lord sometimes. My prayer today is that as you begin to give unto the Lord from today, not just giving the Lord, I mean cultivating the habits of becoming a radical giver is what opens our door. Is what opens our door. Not everything is prayer. You know, Nigerians like prayer. Hmm? Because we are African, we have strength. We are number one in, you know, Africans don't like doing the right thing. We like following shortcuts. And even in Christendom, we like shortcuts because prayer costs you nothing. If you like, shout and bring out your throat. If it is a, a, a thing that sacrifice of giving will solve, only prayer will not solve it. Church, am I talking? Because there are prayerable things and there are doable things. I want to leave you here with the words of our senior pastor in Biumi. He said, when you have prayed all manner of prayer, and you have seen all manner of song, faster than the fasting and not the suffering, it's a time to change levels and take your seat. Drop it in the order of God and leave it there. Amen. May the Lord continue to prosper you. Start your feet.